a heart without compassion, a mind without clarity, an intellect without intuition, is a life without satisfaction. We are looking for satisfaction in life. In this rat race of satisfying our, our gratifying our needs, we are destroying our planet. And it doesn't happen. So we must wake up. This is high time we wake up. Tomorrow I'll be addressing a large gathering with a hundred thousand farmers in this state. I'm going to appeal to them to keep this planet, to, to preserve the soil. Just for getting a big of bananas, don't put harmful chemicals into this mud. We can't afford to have poison creeping into our food without our knowledge. The rising incidence of cancer rising incidence of many other harmful diseases. Isn't it so? Have you heard so many incidences of cancer in the past? When you were a small, at least I have not. Diseases are increasing because we are, we are not taking care of our earth. We are not taking care of our seeds. So I am requesting all that, I am going to request on behalf of our charter, all the farmers in this state to preserve the seeds. There are certain spare or original seeds, indigenous seeds for every province here. They are all being destroyed when we take up, you know, the, uh, this rat race of growing different type of or monotype of crops. We should be back to the nature, preserve the nature, preserve the water, preserve earth. As I said, the way forward in this book is the essence of all the scriptures. What we need to do? Equality. Men and women are equal. Yes. What does that indicate? Man and woman are equal. Even God is half woman and half man. God is not just man. man. He is half woman also. That means we are, we are all equal. We all have equal share. No discrimination is ever allowed in the ancient days. And we should repeat that. We have to bring that forward. You know, wherever women are not being empowered, we all must take the pledge oath to do justice, to bring justice. Sometimes I think if our charter, our charter's vision has gone into the minds and hearts of all the leaders of the world, perhaps the Copenhagen Conference would have become a flop. I think they fail to think in that time, in that lines of our charter. That's, that's when you know, this huge big summit we had on environmental just blocked. The five elements of human dignity first. And then saving the water, saving the earth from harmful chemicals, stopping the air pollution and doing deep breathing, you know, we have to breathe a little deeper to relax our mind, to have a smile on everybody. So challenges are there, but if you are angry and worry about the challenges, you are going to cut your own fingers. It's not going to help. So what is needed is a revolution, but not in anger or frustration. A revolution with a smile. A revolution with compassion. Thank you very much.
thankfulness, Karikeya, for bringing us. I had this threat to Mikhail, a brother and co-worker, being strengthened by your eyes. You are unique. Before you, there has never been someone like you. And after a long life, there will be never be someone like you. This uniqueness of every one of us may be preserved, Mikhail, on the way to the future. Thank you, Rafa. Thank you, Your Holiness. Well, it's my privilege and honor to conclude the rest of the Sustainability Ceremony. And I would conclude, like to conclude with sharing my dream. My dream is that these lotuses of wisdom, these rays of inspiration, these roses of love and compassion that we just heard and that just have been shared will reach the heart of many people around the planet. May they, may we all contribute to this transition to sustainable ways of living. May our hearts be touched by what we just heard. May we all contribute in this struggle. As Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh, the Zen master, has shared in his message to the young people, we need a collective awakening process. So may we all contribute in this. As he said, one Buddha is not enough. And speaking here at the place of Mahatma Gandhi, I think we all have a lot to learn from this great soul, this great spirit, in our quest for sustainable ways of living. Especially the purity of heart, the purity of our thoughts, the purity of our motivations in our actions. Let our thoughts be free from those intoxications and contaminations so that the fruits of our labor and of our work for the earth charge will also be purified. May we take inspiration from his example of simplicity so that also our lifestyles become simple as his. May we take encouragement of his humility and his great respect for other cultures, other traditions, other worldviews. And may we also take inspiration from his quest for truth, his unwavering commitment to hold on to those universally shared values of compassion, of love, so that we can help to that these, these values may blossom around the world. And in all this, we need your help, because we're part of the fellow project that tries to bring together those messages of our beloved masters and teachers and of you, the young people. So you are all invited to record your own messages on video, your visions and dreams for the future, and upload those on the Feather Project website, on YouTube. You are encouraged to also interview the elders in your communities so that the stories of the past will be shared and will be, will be brought into our meetings, the story of the past. We've just been to Dharamsala to record the message of His Holiness the Karmapa, and we did interviews with Tibetan leaders and Tibetan environmental activists. And one of those environmental activists shared the story that in the past in Tibet there was no TV, but the elders were the TVs. Grandpa was the TV, Grandma was the TV. So young people were taking encouragement from the stories of the past. And maybe for our meetings with the Earth Charter, we should bring in those stories of the past, the stories of the elders, so that we feel nourished by their experiences. And maybe this is something also to take forward, to indeed bring in those stories of the past, of the elders, of those words of wisdom that we just heard, of the beautiful music and the songs that Emmanuel has shared with us last night or yesterday night, and uh, that at times when another speech, another talk about the state of the world, another graph or a statistic of dying animals, um, rising oceans may not help, a prayer 
will reach many, many hearts. A sound, a minute of silence may help us to listen and really, really connect to the depth and the beauty of nature. And so let us give form to these manifold expressions of the art so that we all engage in the flourishing and blossoming of the earth community. And with this, I close the ceremony. Thank you very much. <laughs>